is just one of our programs that we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on RELO funding today. Amerifirst is the name of our company. We're going to go through a slide deck here in a second. And, um, but it really, they're, 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 this webinar serves multiple purposes. It is um, obviously, you know, talking about RELO funding, but it also can be a recruiting uh, uh, opportunity recruiting tool for you guys if you want to if, if you get into this and you and you are like me you may have been unrecruitable but you also may be seeing what's going on in our industry right now i've been doing this for over 30 years 32 or 33 years or something and i think the industry both the real estate and the mortgage is changing more in the last three years than in the last 30 years it's changing really fast and i think that we have to stay on the cutting edge and keep going and we have to generate rev multiple streams of revenue. We have to fight these fintech companies like the Open Doors and the and the Zillows and the, I mean, even Google. I listened to a great podcast the other day with Joe Rogan with a guy uh, talking about Google and what they're doing and how they're, <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy what's going on. And I think that we uh, have, We've, we've got to keep moving. I've been, we've been doing things the same way for a long time. I've been doing it the same way for a long time. I mean, technology changes some stuff and stuff like that, but generally the mortgage and the real estate industries have been doing things the same, same way, but we're all under attack. I mean, I think they're even trying to get rid of the buyer's agent and you guys probably see that and uh, hang on, I got to get this other, call going on i gotta get out of um i think that you got i mean they're they're trying to get rid of the buyer's agent they're quite frankly probably trying to get rid of the loan officer you know when you see all the consumer direct uh, marketing push button get mortgage yeah that might work 25 or 30 percent of the time but there's a there a lot of people have complicated lives complicated finances stuff like that and it's not that easy so and it's not that easy to get rid of the buyer's agent I mean, yes, I can get online and find all the houses that are for sale in my neighborhood right now, but there's so much more to it for you guys to be the buyer's agent. I saw an ad in the paper the other day in, a, uh, in our industry rag where the builder was paying uh, only $1,000 to the, to the buyer's agent. Bring us a buyer, we'll pay you $1,000. If that doesn't tell me they're trying to get rid of buyer's agents, I, I don't know what does. So we got to keep moving. We've got to keep changing with the times a little bit in my opinion and that's kind of what this does and then the fact that i'm seeing other mortgage companies pop up and do this exact pro program including the largest lender in the country rocket loans rocket mortgage quicken loans go to rocketprofessional.com they're doing the same thing heck you agents on the call probably have been called 10 times by these guys it's already happening and when i see the biggest lender in the country doing it i think i'm moving in the right direction so super, super uh, stoked and excited to bring this to you. Thank you for uh, joining us. We do it every uh, Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Central. I'm in Austin, Texas, Central Time. Tuesday at 4 p.m., Thursday at 11 a.m. And uh, we'll have anywhere from what we got about almost 20 people on today, 30, 40, 50 people on. And I haven't even been inviting anybody, really. I need to get on that. I just posted it on Facebook one second ago. But I really need to get this message out. But it's a good way to invite people. If you're skeptical about it or if you're all in but haven't started growing your organization and you want to use an old buddy of mine's trick when it comes to recruiting, Call people that you know and respect that are doing a lot of business and say, hey, would you jump on this webinar with me and poke holes in it? It's, I find it really interesting, but I value your opinion. And I'd really love to see you get on and, and tell me if this is good, bad, indifferent. And, and, and quite frankly, that's a good way to get people on. They don't think they're being recruited. So I'm gonna dive right into the slide deck. If you've got a question, uh, please put it in the chat. Uh, Michael, Ryan, Dennis, any of those guys can uh, answer the questions for you because I can't, when I'm going through the slide deck, I can't really see uh, everybody. So anyway, I am going to go right here and right there and feel free to interrupt, ask me questions, shoot a text, raise your hand, the other guys will get on it. Okay, like I said, AmeriFirst Financial is the name of our company, great company. 
um, did almost five billion in loans last year. It's a 30 year old company, almost five billion in loans last year. And will probably quite frankly, because of the traction that we're getting with this program and others that we'll touch on, um, probably double that number this year. Eric Bowlby's the owner, great guy, real progressive thinker, has been with the company since he was practically a kid uh, as a, he was like a loan, uh, uh, loan officer assistant or something. And his dad was running operations and he and his dad ended up over the years actually buying the company. Relo Funding is the name of this product. I, I talk about four, five pillars for the purchase money market that we've got. This is one of them. It happens to be my favorite, but it's just one of five unique pillars. We've all, all been doing, we all do loans. We all have great communication, great rates, great systems. Um, for the most, most part, all of us do. <laughs> Those of us that have been doing it a while. And uh, this is just, uh, I, I talk about these five or six pillars I've got that are unique type programs that not everybody's doing. This is one of them, and this is probably the most unique. unique. RELO, in this case, stands for Real Estate Loan Officer. We're gonna get into that here in a, uh, in a minute. So RELO Funding is the name of the program. I don't really feel we're redefining the mortgage industry and we're talking about compensation uh, enhancements. So being first to market's a big deal. We all know what Netflix did to the uh, movie rental industry. We all know what Amazon's done to the retail industry. I'm not picking on EXP. There's probably some good EXP uh, agents on here and from other companies. So uh, EXP, uh, Keller Williams, uh, Real Mortgage, those companies are, are, are not real mortgage, real brokerage. Those companies are adopting this multi-tiered residual profit sharing program, not to say Century 21, Remax, Coldwell Banker, or your boutique brokerage are not doing a great job, but these companies, you can't argue that they have disrupted the industry somewhat. Keller Williams, largest company in the world. I mean, largest real estate company. Uh, um, uh, uh, what the other one, EXP, um, they uh, uh, have rapidly grown, right? Uh, so is this a uh, real brokerage, not to the extent that these other guys are, but we're seeing it more and more is my point. You may love Remax, you may love Century 21, you may love Coldwell Banker, you may love your boutique brokerage firm. We're gonna talk about a little bit about that because one of the advantages of this program is you can stay right where you are. You might own half a dozen Remax franchises and love Remax, you don't have to, you don't have to leave. We think that this RELO funding program can even be bigger than, than those companies and, and for multiple reasons, but two big reasons are that when those real estate companies were growing their companies, they had to recruit you or somebody else away from Remax, right? Away from Coldwell Banker. In this case, we don't have to do that. So we think, and the world is our oyster. There are, depending on where you read, 1.6 to 2 million agents in the country. And, the, and, and, and the, 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 that's our whole market because they don't have to go anywhere. The other reason they think this can be even bigger is when a real estate company or a real estate agent hits roughly 2 million in production in a fiscal year, give or take, they go to 100% commission at a lot of these companies. They're capped. We have no cap. So when they when 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 those agents are capped, there's no more profit. There's no more revenue to share. We have no cap. We this is we, we signed up. We've signed up big teams uh, to this program that are doing you know hundreds of loans, no cap. So we think that AmeriFirst is on the cutting edge and that we're truly disrupting uh, the industry. Okay. Uh, there's two parts of RELO funding. There's two more lines of revenue from the transaction that we're working on. Remember when I'm talking about this stuff, and if you're a real estate agent, if you're a loan officer, it's, this is all available to you, a real estate agent, wherever you work, all available to you. Uh, and we're gonna be kind of flip-flopping back and forth. We focus on the agent a little bit more, but I'll get into a little bit for the loan officer. So if you're getting through this slide deck 
and, and watching this webinar. And by the time I'm done, you're thinking, man, I'd love to turn my loan officer onto that so I can keep working with him. Absolutely, we're interested in talking to your loan officer. Now, loan officers do have to leave their company and join us. This is our program. But two more lines of revenue. One is a half a point, 50 basis points, up to a max of $2,500 per transaction. That does not, I want you to remember, that does not, if you're a real estate agent, that does not have to be your personal transaction. You, you can be dual licensed and be the loan officer of record and the real estate agent on the same transaction in 49 out of 50 states. In California, they've been doing it since the beginning of time. You can, Utah's the only state you can't do it. But you might not even be doing it on your own transaction. You might be refinancing people in your database. You might be, we had a lady, a reload agent the other day talking to a lady in a grocery store and they, they, they brought up, uh, they brought up uh, uh, real estate and, and she said she was getting ready to refinance. Our reload agent, there's no real estate transaction, but she ended up doing a refi. So this is not just on your real estate transactions. So half a point, residual income for both real estate agents. Some of you guys know what residual income is. Some of you loan officers don't because we've never had it. So passive residual income for realtors and loan officers. And it's truly an unprecedented business model for loan officers to attract and compensate real estate agents. I have been attracting and compensating real estate agents for over 30 years. And I've done it in every way, shape and form imaginable from joint ventures to marketing services agreements to affiliated business arrangements, you name it. Uh, lead generating agreements, you name it, we've done it. This is different than all those things for a, a number of reasons. One, it gets down to the agent level. I joke with my friends that are still at Keller Williams. I'm in Austin. Keller Williams started in Austin. I started probably just a few years after Gary did in 1989 is when I started. I think he started in the early 80s. Um, for 10 years, I paid Keller Williams $50,000 a month in a marketing services agreement. And I'll joke with my buddies that are still there. I'll, I'll be like, uh, hey, Roland, did you guys ever get any of that 50 grand? <laughs> He's like, no, we had better Christmas parties, but we didn't get any of the money. This gets down to the individual agent who really controls the lead and really wants to make sure everything goes well. And now is dual licensed telling their client, I've got both my mortgage and my real estate license. They go hand in hand. I want to make sure you have a good experience and I'm going to be with you all the way through. I've partnered up with Mara first. I'm using my loan officer. He's a great guy and we're going to take really good care of you. And so it's really an unprecedented model for a loan officer to grow their business uh, through the real estate deal. And then of course the realtors are also really attracting other uh, realtors and loan officers to the program because you want to build your downline. You want to build your organization. Don't laugh at me when I say this, but many of you agents, you might not realize there's quite a bit of money in a loan, in a mortgage loan. Um, I know some of my agents have joked about the money that we make as lenders. So what we've done, that 50 basis points and that passive residual income, we've taken out of the loan side and we've taken out, quite frankly, of the loan officer side as a referral fee. So we didn't want to mess with closing costs or rates. We're just dividing up that revenue pie, which is a pretty good pie. I mean, it's been a great, great industry and I've had a great career and I've really enjoyed it and I still love it and I love this new way of looking at it, but it's been a good career. We're just dividing that money up a little bit differently than uh, maybe it's been divided up in the past and we're including the agent in it. And on the passive residual income, we're, we're including the loan officer in it. We've never had it before. Quite frankly, I think that we could be on the cusp of societal changes. I think that revenue sharing and profit sharing are, is going to bleed into other industries. We know it's in a few other industries right now, but when you see the success of some of these real estate companies with this revenue sharing model, I think you're going to see it in more uh, in different industries, in different business sectors. Just think today, who's the villain today? The villain today is the CEO who's getting a hundred million dollar bonus, but his company's losing money. The villain today is the Walmart family 
whose cashier has to get food stamps to make ends meet? What if they shared some more of that revenue? They'd still be billionaires. Uh, Glenn Sanford, the owner of EXP, he's a billionaire. And he's making millionaires out of a lot of other people because he's sharing some of that revenue. Same with Gary Keller. So I think that we might see more of this as, uh, as, the, uh, as the years go on. Uh, this is just some mortgage inter industry facts. I'm not going to bore you with this one, but uh, none of it's residual. We're only as good as our last uh, deal, our last month. Uh, and so, um, you know, these averages are very similar to real estate averages, actually, that's 63,000. But, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't doing a lot. You're going to see a lot of changes now that refis have gone away. You're going to see, you're going to get called by a lot of loan officers. The margins are going to get skinny. Uh, it's going to be a bloodbath. I've been down this road several times over the past, uh, you know, number of years, and uh, it's going to be interesting. So, you know, a lot of those that lower tier brings that average down on both sides for the agents and the things. We're all, you know, a little bit kind of on a hamster wheel, right? We, 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 are, like I say, are only as good as our last month. Generating additional lines of revenue, generating passive income, I think, is a way to get off that. Uh, that uh, that hamster wheel. So we talked about how this is really modeled after these uh, multi-tiered companies. Um, uh, first time we've had it in the mortgage industry, and it's first time uh, that the loan officers uh, have an opportunity to create a residual income stream. It might be the first time for a real estate agent to do it as well at, in their brokerage firm. They're I talked to a great guy the other day. He did twenty seven million last year. Good guy, got a team, a real estate agent, 27 million, that's pretty good. And he was looking for how to generate some more revenue out of that $27 million. You know, he's getting this buyer's agent and maybe an admin, I think. Uh, and he was gonna go to his loan officer and ask the loan officer to help him with some co-marketing, maybe pay $1,000 a month. I said, I said, Ray, you do one deal, you're gonna make two and a half times that amount. Even the, marketing services agreements that I've paid in the past, whether it was 25,000 a month, 50,000 a month, it's, we've been all over the board, this would pay uh, a lot more. And the other thing I like about this, I, I, I joke to my buddies, did you get any of that 50,000? They said no. But here's the other thing that people don't realize. We're all licensed, you're licensed, I'm licensed, we're all regulated. In those other arrangements, nobody was licensed. I like this, even better from a compliance standpoint because everybody's licensed. Is it a hassle? It's a bit of a hassle. None of us like doing continuing education every year, whether it's six hours or not a year. We don't like it. Uh, and you got to pass a test. So you got to take 20 hours and pass a test and then you got to keep your license up. Is that a hassle? Maybe if you did it, if you picked up an extra 30, 40, 50,000 a year, uh, is it worth it? A hundred percent. 100%. Uh, we talked about this 20 hours, get your NMLS, take and pass your national test and activate it to maintain your uh, license. And then we're going to hire you. We'll get into that a little bit more. And you're going to receive your application link, your marketing mortgage application link. You're the loan officer of record, your license. We're going to do all the work, just like my team does all the work in any deal I bring in now. Agent calls me, hey, Dave, could you, uh, you know, help our clients? We're buying this house. My team runs it. The, the client does their own loan application, uploads their own docs, and then my team takes it. It's the same thing we're doing today and we've been doing forever. Uh, promote market that application link, that mortgage application link to your clients, regardless of whether it's your deal or not. Uh, and then uh, get paid. And get paid in W-2 income because you're now a W-2 part-time outside sales rep for AmeriFirst. Many of you guys are broke or are, are, are brokers. Many of you guys are 1099. You're not putting any money into Social Security. You know, W-2, put a little money into Social Security. Uh, so I think that's a uh, that's a uh, win here. Uh, I love this uh, slide that uh, Chris does. Many of you have heard this uh, before, but it, would you rather have a million dollars now or a penny a day that we double every day for 30 days? I'll uh, jump right to the answer uh, of that. And this is how it doubles in the first two weeks, not much. This is how it doubles in the next week. You know, now you're up $21,000, not even close to a million. But look what happens if you do it for a month. You get up to uh, $5.3 million. That's how compounding interest 
uh, that's how compounding interest uh, it works and, 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 these, and these tiers and people in your third, fourth, fifth level out there doing what we're doing and recruiting people for you, for your organization. So uh, it's pretty cool. Compounding growth, residual income. These are things that we should be adding. We're all entrepreneurs. We all are commissioned. We're all only as good as our last month. We need multiple streams of income. Uh, a good buddy of mine at uh, one of these aforementioned real estate companies, he recruits to three lines of credit. I mean, uh, three lines of revenue, the commission, the stock. Some of these companies are publicly traded stock, Amerifirst is not. And um, uh, uh, the residual income, three lines. He, and he said to me, he said, so you're going to let me add two more lines of revenue to my sales pitch, to my recruiting pitch, to my revenue, to my income stream, another residual income stream, and that half a point? That's five lines of revenue? You know, get out of the way is actually what he told me. He's done very well. Let's look at what that residual income looks like. Ours is $500. At, at, at some of those companies, and I'm not totally I'm familiar with, with some of the real estate companies, but not 100%. I think EXP is like 2,800 and then 3,200. So 500 doesn't sound like as much, but no cap makes all the difference in the world. But let's but take a, and our uh, seventh level is easier to open up. You only need 20 recruits onto your first level. You, you get one recruit in first level, opens up your, your uh, first level, of course. You get five uh, recruits whether they're real estate agents, loan officers, insurance agents, title reps, anybody that is in the industry, anybody that wants to get licensed, anybody that thinks they can send loans through the matrix, they're, they're your, your market, right? So your, your market is huge. So you bring in five recruits, I'll call them, um, your, your second level's opened up. And every time any of those people do a loan, uh, you're, that's $140. So you can see how that five uh, $100 is split up through the seven levels. You only need 20 first level uh, recruits. I know people on the real estate side that have recruited 20, 30 people and they've got, I know one guy who recruited 50 people in four years. He said 15 of them didn't do anything. So 35 people grew it to, he now has 2,100 people and he's making $100,000 a month. Well, That, that uh, Dennis, thank you so much. That's a big deal. Yet another reason why it's a little bit easier. The, um, every loan that goes in with no cap gets that $500. We call it our marketing fee. It comes out of the corporate side and uh, goes right into that matrix. So there's three reasons right there. Thank you, Dennis, that make it uh, a little bit uh, easier. So let's take a look at... Uh, 10, you bring in 10 people that get 10 people. And those agents do one deal a month. That's 120 deals. That's 12,000. But if those 10 get 10, now you have 100 agents doing one deal a month. That's 1,200. That's 168,000. That's $180,000 a year on your second level. I think that's incredibly – it can work. I think it's incredibly uh, – uh, the, the opportunity is incredible. On my next slide, I think it's the next slide, I'm going to take that even more conservative and show you what it likes. Well, here it goes. So this slide, the left-hand side, the yellow side is the passive income, just like the, the uh, previous slide. And remember, that's available to anybody, anybody I talked about before, anybody in the industry that gets licensed and we hire and we start rocking and rolling. That, the the, the right-hand side, the blue side, is when as I'm going to talk to loan officers. But the yellow side is available to loan officers, real estate agents, and anybody else. And it could be the same loan officer. Maybe you're on different, you're on different tiers as you go through it. So I'm going to be more conservative on this slide with those estimates. So I talk when I, and especially when I'm talking to a loan officer you can bring in 20 agents. Loan officers market to real estate agents and any decent loan officer is gonna be able to bring in 20 agents. 
but let's don't say one deal a month. Let's say one deal a quarter. So I really want to bring this down. Just four deals a year from that agent, from those 20 agents. Just like the slide before, that's 8,000 in passive because you got 80 deals for a year, right? But, but as a loan officer, if you shift to the blue side, as a loan officer, you're doing the deals. Might be your loan officer you're working with now, might be one of our loan officers like Mike or Dennis or Lewis, or uh, I don't know who else on the call. Um, they could be doing the loan. You, you as the relo agent are the loan officer of record. Mike, I'll use him example. We've been together 20 years, great loan officer, licensed, et cetera, et cetera, of course. He's the loan officer assistant in this case. He's the Sherpa, we call him, because he's doing all the heavy lifting. He's acting as the loan officer. You're the loan officer of record. You're licensed so I can compliantly pay you and you can start the process. And then he's going to take it from there. That loan officer is going to take it from there. So that's, uh, let's use an average loan amount of 250. That's 20 million. Just one deal a quarter from those 20 agents is 20 million. In this case, I'm only gonna pay Mike a point. Mike gets a point and a half on most of his personal self-source production, but he's gonna pay a referral fee to you, the agent, on this case, so I gotta pay you a half a point. I'm only gonna pay him a point. I've said my whole career, if I could make a point of deal, I'd be a happy guy. That's $200,000 plus his 8,000 passive is $208,000. That's pretty good for, to, for a loan officer to have a tool like this to get in front of real estate agents. I tell loan officers when I'm recruiting them, call reluctance just went out the window. You've got no reason not to pick up that phone and it's gonna be as light as a feather because you've got an incredible tool to call agents with. Now, instead of uh, 10 getting 10, let's say 20, uh, well, in this case, it's kind of saying, let's say 20, you got 20 agents you're working with and let's say they average two people, two recruits each. We all know five or 10 of them won't do anything, but five or 10 of them, might get five or 10 each, right? Because you got guys like that are on this call consistently that are inviting people to this call that are out there working the phones and working the markets uh, that, that, that easily can happen. But we'll just use a, a, a kind of a conservative uh, average of two per agent. Once again, just using four deals a year, that's 160 deals, that's 22,000. Now they're making $30,000 in passive income. That might pay your mortgage, your car payment, um, a nice car payment. 2,500 bucks a month, um, that's nothing to sneeze at. And then when I'm talking to the loan officer, and remember that's, that's, that's 30,000 the loan officer didn't get before, let alone the agent. Some agents might be working in a system that pays this, but here's a secondary one. Um, so average loan amount 250, that's 40 million. Now Mike's making 600,000, 630,000 counting his passive income and the agents are making half the, you know uh, uh whatever 600 the 300 000 were passing out in the uh the rest of the revenue i told you there was a little bit of money in uh these mortgage loans these individual loans heck just think think how much money how much revenue is kicked off from one real estate transaction i mean you might have six percent in commissions You've got the mortgage revenue, you've got title revenue, you got appraisers, inspectors, surveyors. I mean, there's a lot of money in a real estate transaction, just one transaction. So anyway, I've got a, I've got a loan officer's attention now. He's looking at this going, wow, this is pretty cool. And then I tell him, and then, and then actually, if, if you have a loan officer, if you're on this call and you're a net branch manager or you're growing a team, Obviously, there's more revenue in a mortgage loan than the one and a half and the 500 bucks, right? You got one and a half in commission and you got $500. There's more revenue there because we got to pay underwriting processing, uh, all that sort of thing. And so often, if you're a branch manager, I don't go into that on this call. I would talk to a branch manager or a net branch manager or a guy growing his team uh, so that he can get all that revenue and then handle his own expenses. That's a different conversation. But one of the things that this chart doesn't obviously point out is that those 20 agents that 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 loan officer went and recruited guess what those agents are doing now first of all they're highly incentivized to make sure their loan officer mike i'm using as an example dennis uh are getting the deals they're, they really want those guys to get the deals because they're being compensated if they get the deals right but guess what else they're doing for that loan officer they're recruiting agents my agents will introduce me to other agents, but they're not actively recruiting them. 
in my in my in my history right now they're actually recruiting agents and those 40 agents are start going to now use mike or dennis or whoever right because they're uh growing their organization now some of those 60 agents might want to bring in their lo own loan offices absolutely rising tide raises all ships it's a great thing to uh, 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 recruit to and to grow. So let's say one of those 20 or 40 agents wants to use their lo own loan officer and Mike is the loan officer, the Sherpa of record right now. No problem. You, We recruit your loan officer in, we now flip you over to your loan officer. Mike is not doing the loans anymore, but he doesn't lose his line in the revenue sharing. You can't move those people around. So he doesn't lose his line there. And not all 60 of them are gonna bring in their loan officer. It's a total win-win situation. Uh, I'm gonna take it a, uh, a couple more levels here. I'll go fast. It's gonna blow you around. You're gonna have to put your big thinker hat on here in about two seconds. If those 40 get two, that's now 80. And if those 80 do one deal a quarter, that's 320, that's another 12,000. Now you're making $43,000 in passive, but the loan officer's doing the loans. That's now 80 million at 1% is 800,000. Now that loan officer's making $1.4 million in uh in commission and pretty soon he's going to get tapped out that's 560 loans you can do 560 loans you might have an assistant you know maybe two at the most uh one year i did 840 loans in personal production it was 20 years ago but i had a big account i'm just working all the time but you can do those i've been, for a long time i didn't do less than 500 loans so you can do it uh and and i didn't make that kind of money back then i think the year i did the year i uh the year I did the 500, the 820 loans. Now, my that was 20 years ago. The loan amounts were a lot lower, and I was doing a ton of HUD foreclosures and government loans and and uh, uh, lower loan amounts. But I still made 662 thousand dollars. I remember my W two, and that was that was uh, that was quite a bit uh, back then. But a lot of fun, a lot of money, a lot of commissions can be made. Let's take it another one. You can see the numbers are getting a little crazy now, but this will blow you away. Five, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. People are recruiting for you. They're sending loans through. We're using a conservative estimate of four a year. They're sending loans through because they want to get compensated. They want to grow their downline. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. $734,000 in passive income. Three quarters of a million dollars for growing an organization that has 2,500 agents in it that are doing just four deals a year. We know those are attainable numbers on the real estate side. I know guys that have 2,500 agents that started with 50, like my buddy in Nashville. I mean, we know this can happen. Will it happen on the mortgage side? I don't know. I'm not gonna lie to you, <laughs> this is new, right? The response we're getting, I think it's gonna happen. I love the idea. I'm an optimistic guy, but that's not really why I think it's gonna work. I think it's going to work because I'm kind of blown away. I'm, well, no, I, you know why I think it's going to work? I think it's going to work because other people are blown away. Other people are signing up. Other people want it. It's the response I'm getting from people is why I think it's going to work. And then we've got the examples of the KWs and the EXPs that are working. So we can absolutely get now 2,500 agents uh, in there with, and like Dennis said, with no minimum qualifying it's just you send a loan through the deal 500 bucks goes in the residual before you know it, you're making seven hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. now the loan officer on the other side is making 25 million <laughs> i told you there's a lot of money now obviously that's i mean you gotta this, this can happen i mean but one loan officer can't do ten thousand loans but i'll tell you what a loan officer can do a decent loan officer anybody processor underwriter processors and underwriters will do 50 deals a month a loan officer let's make that conservative again and bring that down to 20 deals a month a good loan officer can do 20 deals a month he's still in today's day and age going to have a couple of assistants probably but and mainly why he's going to have a couple of assistants because what's the biggest part of his job to get those 20 deals it's prospecting it's relationship building it's lead generating he's got to get that's where he's spending most of his time but if he was there just taking in applications and answering the phone, he could easily do uh, 20 deals without an assistant. 
So if I can hire people that are loan officers that we're providing business to, underwriters, processors, whatever, that do just 20 deals a month, guess what? I only need 43. I could, I'm telling you, I could find 43 people to do 20 deals a month and pay them handsomely, pay them $10,000 a month, pay them $1,000, $20,000 a month, $1,000 a, 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 a unit. We're still gonna come out way higher. So pay five or $10 million building that team. You're still gonna make a ton of money on the loan officer side. So if you want to get your loan officer intrigued, if you want to ask your loan officer to look at this deal and poke holes in it and tell us your, uh, tell him, have him tell you, him or her tell you his thoughts, you know, it's a good way to get him on the phone. I was unrecruitable. I was unrecruitable. I was making seven figures. I wasn't working that hard. And I had a really good team. People had been with me for a long time, like Mike, 20 years. I, uh, in November, last November, I was married, it was my 28th year uh, wedding anniversary. My processor's been with me longer than I've been married. So it was really running on autopilot. I was making great money. And um, quite frankly, I blew it up to take this opportunity because I think this can be even bigger. I don't know yet. I, I, I watched Keller Williams do it from a front row seat. I watched EXP do it from a front row seat. And um, I joke, I don't know if lightning can strike again, but I'm going to stand over there in the rain and find out. We talked a little bit about who your market is. Look at that list of 15 or 20 people that you can tell about. There are people in that list that are influencers, that are empire builders, that are big thinkers. And those are the people you want to talk to. You, you want to talk to people that get it. Don't waste your time on the naysayers. I had one guy, well, I don't know. I think it's going to attract lower tier people. Quite the opposite has happened, quite frankly. Uh, I don't know. That's not really, we're a relationship, you know, kind of business. Yeah, well, this is a relationship builder. And we're not breaking that loan officer real estate agent relationship partnership because we'll bring that loan officer in so you can keep working with them and you can move around or you can build a relationship with one of our guys. So there are really, I talked to a financial planner the other day uh, who uh, often will, they're, they're, they're careful how they put it. He, he, he told me, you know, there, there's an average of $173,000 per house in the United States in equity, $4 trillion. Often it makes sense to do a cash out refinance to pay off your consumer debt. That's what he was talking about, where, where he's careful. He doesn't want people to do a cash out refinance to invest in the market. Um, but he said, if when I'm, and I often uh, ask people to, to, to take some of that equity and pay off those credit cards or whatever, and that makes fiscal sense. And then on top of that, if I've got my license, I can just do the loan form and get a half a point? Absolutely. So a lot of opportunity here. You, you really got to think big. You really got to get the wheels turning, the juices flowing, and uh, see what you want to do. Uh, uh, you can text uh, uh, RELO and uh, you'll get alerts for future webinars to uh, that number to uh, let people know about it. You can send an email uh, there. Uh, Mike or Ryan, you can put my uh, contact information in the chat box. Dennis, Lewis, do the same thing. More importantly, if, if you stumbled across this, call any one of us. If somebody who invited you to this, get with them that's very important if somebody invited you to this you know we want to keep the um uh what's the word i'm looking for uh authenticity of any downlines right so so stick with your people there there it is get get back with the person who invited you here uh today there's the owner eric bolby this guy is a entrepreneur this guy is a progressive thinker this guy he came up with another program i'm gonna i'm gonna uh maybe i'll pull one of the other guys in to talk about it um he he, he he's come up with a cash buy program to combat these i buyers which is another uh uh section of the industry that's gaining a lot of traction 
you've got the eye buyers, you've got the, uh, the homewards, you've got the ribbons, depending on what part of the country you're in. Uh, he's doing it, but he's not doing it as a profit center. He's doing it as a, you got to get contracts and we got to get loans. I mean, he's not doing anybody any good uh, in this crazy market to not get houses under contract and, and to lose to these I buyers, these open doors. Somebody told me the other day, they pulled up a bunch of listings in their market and like 80% of them were open door. I mean, that's a little crazy. And so he's like, well, I can do that. I've got an 800, well, first of all, he did almost 5 billion. He's got an $800 million line of credit. Um, he can use that. So we're, we're buying, I'll, I'll let one of the other guys talk about that. Let me get to that slide. That's a great, a great, uh, a great program. So we want to get off that hamster wheel. We want to get massages uh, at the edge of the ocean. And uh, yeah. this is another way uh, to do it. Uh, you know, we, we got to keep, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. You know, I like this one. What's your freedom number? What, what's it take for you to be uh, doing that? All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go into a couple of these programs. Let me see if I can see who all is on the call here. I think I, I'm here, but I don't know. You might think I'm not. Oh, there's Lewis. I know I'd recognize that voice anywhere, even though I can't see his picture. Lewis, why don't you? Uh, Hi, ben. I, I'm, you... I'm, I'm up excited because I mean, I, like the day after tomorrow, I'm going to Puerto Rico. All right, all right, all right. We've got four programs here. Why don't you tackle one? Let's let Dennis tackle one. Let's let Mike Brandt tackle one. Lewis, you go first. The loan guarantee product is called PYT, Protect Your Transaction. What I love about this product is that we're totally underwriting the client up front, so we're eliminating that credit contingency. So when you're writing an offer on a property, especially a realtor, you're, we're sending a letter of guarantee from the underwriter basically stating that this person has been fully credit qualified with your offer. On top of that, we have an insurance policy anywhere from 15 to 20 grand, depending if you're a regular person or if you're a veteran or if you're a service provider, you're going to have a $20,000 guarantee. Up to 12,000 of that 20 can be assigned to the seller as additional earnest money. So if we don't close on that deal, all of a sudden there's an extra 12 grand. What I love about this is I've been able to get veterans, even in this market today, under contract because of PYT. Because when the offer goes in and they see that it's a veteran and they see that they've completely been credit approved, the, the sellers are looking at it going, wait a minute, this, and they have no contingency. They're looking at it a lot stronger than they were before. So, I mean, I'm shocked because the last couple of months I've been closing VAs, which I thought that was gone. But with this product, it opens the door to the other products we have. So after your client has been PYT'd, protect your transaction, they're under that program. Now that opens the door for the cash buy programs, the other programs that we have available for them to win some deals. So Dennis, do you want to talk, talk about the cash buy, cash is king product? Yeah, oh, okay. I'll take, I'll take forward, that Mike. one. Uh, I've done a few of these recently and uh, the cash buy program is an awesome program. Uh, we can use it to help a seller sell a house. We can use it to help a buyer buy a house. So we can buy a house with cash. Uh, we can prevent a contingency by buying the house they wanna sell with cash. So any of you uh, agents that are on this call, just uh, imagine going to a listing presentation in today's market and saying, I guarantee you I can sell your house. We'll give you a cash offer up to 90% of the house's value. And uh, you can take that cash offer or uh, you can sell it on the open market um, and, and, you know, take a little more time to sell it. Of course, the open market is going to produce a better result, right? But if they have timing issue where they need the convenience factor of selling that house quickly, we can move in, pay cash for it. They can go on their way and do what they need to do. We'll turn around and sell it and we'll give them any profit we make. So we're not in this for a profit. We're not in this to um, make a lot of money and make this a, a separate program for us. What we're in this for is to get the loan from that client. That's all we want. We want the loan. So if they're going to take that equity, buy the next house with that equity, we want to be able to do the loan at that, that lower LTV. That's our goal. For a cash buy, uh, we want to we wanna help that buyer be able to win in this competitive market. So uh, we, we want to take them out of having a conventional 10% down loan competing against four or five other buyers three of which have cash, one of which is putting 50% down. 
Well, guess what? We can take our client that has 10% down, give him the cash he needs to buy that house, and then we'll turn around and sell the house back to him for what we pay for it. So it's a great program. We're competing with iBuyers. What makes us better is we're not a separate company. We are a lender that's providing this service. So we want to help our clients win in this competitive market. And that's what it's all about. And then we also have special programs and Dennis will go into that a little bit. And one, one little thing I want to add, Michael, for real estate agents, the beauty of the trade-in and the cash buy program is now when you walk into a house for a listing uh, presentation, right? You're going in there with the power knowing that you have a $800 million line of credit behind you that you can buy that house from your client and their way they can go buy that new house without any issues. Because the biggest problem we're seeing today, not only the short inventory, is that listing agents can't get listings because mama doesn't know where we're going, right? And mama wants to move up, she wants a bigger house, but she doesn't want to put the house on the market until they bought that new house. Dad, who's over here going, wait, 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 wait. I don't want to have two mortgages. I, I don't want to have to refinance. I want to be able to use the equity out of my home to put down on that house. This solves that problem for you. So when you go on a listing presentation, and I, average, I would tell everybody on this call, at 1.30 today, we will be having a Cash is King presentation listen to how these guys are selling this product and they're picking up listings left and right because now you can take that buyer i mean that seller help them buy their new home and now you become our listing agent on their house that's the beauty of this program because we're helping agents create more income but create more inventory that's going to come available that is i'm, I'm sorry i had to jump in there because that really gets me really really excited I'll shut up now and I'll let Dennis take over. Cares. No, all, right. Just <laughs> all right, all right. Listen, everybody, I can't thank you enough for being on the call. Just the, uh, Relo Funding is a good website. It's got uh, it's got the owner doing a six minute video. If you want to go check that out, it'll kind of re uh, reinforce what we were talking about here today. We like I say, we do this every Tuesday at five Eastern, every Thursday at noon Eastern. Relomatrix.com to sign up and to get the alerts. We do indeed thank you for joining us today. And there's Chris's family and Chris is not even on the call. <laughs> so I'm going to stop the share. We're going to take one more look at the chat box. Uh, let's see anything there. Cash King training. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, we, we can put that. Do you, uh, I've got that link handy. If you, you want me to put that up there, Dennis, or do you, the, the uh, huh? You will. It's already, oh, Mike did already. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a good one too to learn more about that cash program. Uh, uh, as great as Relo Funding is, I'm telling you that cash program is getting a ton of uh, of uh, 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 responses too. It's a it's a great program. So while we're not the only ones doing this stuff, like I said at the top, you know, when you get Quicken and and uh, Rocket and these other companies doing some of this stuff, and then you got iBuyers, 
but we are disrupting it. We are getting in front of people and I love being first to market. So uh, great call today. I want to thank everybody. I, I, uh, if I didn't, I saw Jay on there a second ago. Thank you, Jay, if you're still on. Hey, buddy. Um, I think that's about it. Unless, Jay, you want to add, you want to add something real quick? Uh, no questions here on my side, but I'll, I'll How are you feeling? You were, uh, you were under the weather last time. I, uh, yeah, I haven't been, but, um, uh, you know, just kind of also doing a ton of stuff, literally on back-to-back -back phone call almost <laughs> daily at this point in time, morning to evening, uh, literally every 30 minutes I'm on a new, a new phone call either or a presentation at this point in time. But, uh, uh, I want to touch on the cash is king thing. You're right. Uh, Everybody that I've spoken to, every presentation I have been involved in, it's always the cash offer or the cash is king program. That's the number one topic that everybody wants uh, to know more about. And here's something I just read uh, just this morning, actually. Uh, for those of you guys who are in the lending side and the finance side, there's a fairly large lender called Suns. And SunWest is a really big lender. Been around forever, you know. Um, for as long as I can remember anyways, 20 plus years. And I'm sure, you know, with David being in the business for 30 plus years, I'm sure they've been around even longer than that. And they came out with a new product, which is kind of interesting. They are now trying to imitate what we have here uh, with uh, Real Funding and Amerifirst, where they're fully underwriting their potential buyer slash borrower up front with the hope of uh, the going into uh, submitting an offer, not a contingent, so no loan contingency and that kind of stuff. It's kind of the same thing. The only different, and a lot of lenders are doing this, and no one so far can reach the point with where we're doing that, where we actually come in with an all-cash offer, a true all-cash offer, because it's a mere first money putting on the table and saying there is no loan, whereas all the other lenders, all our competition, what they're coming in with is they're saying we have a fully underwritten loan, but there's still a loan. So it's still a contingent loan, it's no, regardless of how you break it. Uh, whereas with the first, when we say, you are fully unwritten. It's cash offer. We mean just that. It's a pile of cash to the seller. Done. There's nothing else left to say about that. So I see a lot of companies trying to play catch up right now to reload Amerifers, and they're having a difficult time right now simply because their structure and their teams and the way that they operate, they just can't compete. They're not just as flexible. So whenever you hear cash offer lender, dig a little bit deeper into that. You will see exactly what I just said. When we say cash, we mean cash. The offer is written in cash with a mere first money versus all the other lenders that I'm seeing where they're saying it's cash, but it's actually a fully underwritten loan, but there's still a loan on there. So you still need to show that there's financing involved. Whereas on our side, no financing involved because there is no loan. It's just cash. Great. Uh, yeah. Great message. Great message. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, good call. Thank you very much for hanging in there. We're uh, just under an hour. We try to keep these things short. We're respectful of everybody's time, but, uh, you know, check it out. Uh, invite people and uh, reach out to who brought you or any of us to answer any of the questions. I can't thank you enough for taking an hour of your very busy day to learn more about this. Y'all be sweet.